Afternoon guys, um, bit of a quiet period at the moment in terms of Tottenham, um, so I haven't really got a lot to say, um, but I did just want to touch on um, transfers, and I'm not only in the know or anything like that, I'm not going to tell you that we're going to be signing this one, that one or the other, because I haven't got a scooby-doo about that, I, I don't know, and I can't even tell you who, who they need to sign, I can tell you the positions I'd like to see strengthened, but I can't really tell you the players that I think would be the right players for us because I don't, I don't really study um, other teams or um, other players from other teams until they kind of play for my team or unless they're playing against my team and then I'll, then I'll take a bit of notice. Um, but what I'm, what I'm hearing is that, and this won't come as any surprise, right? But what I'm hearing is that funds are very, very, very limited. There is a, a situation whereby we will have to sell players if we want to buy players. And the problem is going to be as if the market is open to buying any of the players that we want to get rid of. Now, it'll be, yeah, it's easy to say, oh, okay, everyone would, what, would like to buy someone like Harry Kane and you could raise a lot of money for Harry Kane if the right team... Um, was prepared to pay the right sort of money because you you know even though you might want money you ain't going to want to do pay, sell him off on the cheap just so that you can raise funds to buy somebody else um so and of course why would you want to sell your best player to fund buying a load of you know mediocre players or players that you uh, that you haven't proved or you don't know if you can rely on yet so it's a bit of a catch 22 situation um, but the likes of Dyer, Winks, Sissoko, um, Alderweireld, who's, who's come out and said he's, he's interested in a move, um, possibly Lucas, um, Aurier, those kind of players, um, if you could sell some of those and raise some funds, then that's the only way we're going to be able to buy any, any new players. Um, but arguably, selling those players weakens your position to a certain extent because if you're selling them, you're actually um, taking out places in your squad. It gives you a thinner squad. So unless you can sell them to replace them, you're still in a catch-22 in the fact that you haven't got you haven't got the depth of squad that you might need if you're playing, you know, FA Cup, League Cup, a conference, Europa Conference, and the. Um, Oh, I've just seen a remote control roboted uh, lawnmower there. Huh. Took my attention, apologies. Um, yeah, so you're not really um, in a position to do that without the depth of squad. And you're stuck with players playing week in and week out, which in my day wasn't a bad thing. But, you know, in the modern game, you need, a, you need depth of squad. So it's going to be really, really interesting to see what happens over the next... Um, few weeks because obviously once the Euros is out of the way I think that's when people will start doing their business because players will be back with their clubs they'll be back with their agents um, and all those inquiries will start to filter through and that you'll start to see any kind of movement if there is going to be movement but I think a lot of teams will probably be in the same position in that unless they've got plenty of cash or a bit of cash to spare um, they are going to be reluctant to part with it um, without maybe offloaded a, a, a couple of players here and there um, so it's going to be an interesting time but but my understanding is that there is no money around uh, for players and we will have to sell if we want to buy um, which is you know a tough tough situation um, now we all know the owner has got plenty of money um, but whether he wants to invest it in a squad or not is another matter and it's one of those things that we've seen year after year after year under Enoch, you know, that they are not um, not the sort of um, owners that will spend willy-nilly um, to improve the squad. They'll spend willy-nilly to buy a plot of land so that they can build a golf course or an art gallery or a, a chicken shop or bark of flats or whatever it might be um, because they're an investment company. Um, but in terms of their investment, the, the best way to make any money out of a football club is to just keep getting them into all the competitions that churn the money, i.e. the Champions League. Um, but if it takes significant finance to do that, 
then you're in the realms of speculate to accumulate and I don't think they're going to speculate the amount we're talking about to accumulate what they potentially could accumulate if you get what I mean I think it's like a, a, a negative um, impact you know spend 100 million to earn 100 million you know why, why would they want to do that so yeah so it's going to be a bit of a interesting time I guess um, and we're gonna have to see what what comes of it but I guess the reason for this video is just to say well don't expect anything too uh, fancy to happen don't expect um, lots of players or, or that kind of stuff to come in unless we can get rid of players um, and equally don't expect to see a large um, exodus of players especially the players you want to see leave um, anytime soon because unless there's someone out there that wants them it's going to be quite difficult to shift them I mean we saw that with with Danny Rose to a certain extent you know um, everyone was just waiting for his contract to end before they before they took him on because they didn't want to spend out any money on him and yet arguably Danny Rose is, is, is uh, you know been a decent left back you know so yeah so very very interesting um, so the other thing I was going to touch on um, because you most people that watch my videos will know that I am not a massive international football fan. Um, I have to be honest and say that even though I'm not a massive international football fan, I still always watch the England games in the Euros or in the World Cup. Because it would be unpatriotic, right? God save the Queen. Uh, it would be unpatriotic not to watch it and support England. Uh, when they're in a, uh, a competition like the Euros or the World Cup. Um, so, I'm excited at the moment. Um, almost to the extent that on Wednesday, I may get a semi. So, this will be the best thing to have happened for England since Euro 96 for me. Um, Euro 96, Italia 90 were the pinnacle of international football for me and the reason why I don't really follow it these days um, because those were the glory days those were the days when England were um, actually felt like they were on the edge of something and then along came the golden generation who did naff all and sport the whole thing and uh, that was it um, and all we've had is uninspiring coaches and uninspiring uh, performances and lots of uh, lots of hype and uh, very little output so I've never really been there but you know I have to say um, this could be a really really good opportunity uh, for England I watched the game on Saturday um, and whilst people will call out that the Ukraine are not very good they were in the same position as us right they got through to the same same point in the competition that we had so they must have something about them because there's other countries that didn't get there that didn't get that far so you know they've got to be better than them right based on that fact um, so we beat them we beat them comprehensively and I think that's uh, you know a great feeling um, and a great lift to the country especially at this COVID ridden times where we where we could really do with uh, a little bit of uh, happiness in our lives um, so yeah um, I will be watching on Wednesday, hopefully getting a semi, and um, and we'll see where that takes us. If we get to the final, I've got a feeling it's going to be against Italy. I think Italy are the uh, are the main contenders. I can see them beating Spain. Um, and what a final that that will be! Um, so interesting times as a, an England fan. Um, I'm not quite ready yet to paint my face and run down the street singing it's coming home um, but I have to say I am quite confident that that we could get something out of this game and uh, potentially lead us to our first um, trophy since the day I was born so you know um, good luck to Gareth and the team I hope they uh, I hope they achieve what they need to achieve and just to finish off by saying I am now on, on, I am now on 998 subscribers to my YouTube channel, which is fantastic. And you know, thank you for all of the support that uh, a lot of you guys give me because I get a lot of comments 
um, from a lot of the same people who have supported me for a long time. <coughs> Richard Evans, as your shout out. Um, Lappers, John Casimo, all these guys um, that follow, follow me all the time. Um, so thanks for that. Um, couple of couple of more subscribers, and we'll be at the magic uh, magic thousand, which which enables you to have a an element of credibility in the YouTuber community. Um, so yeah, I'm uh, looking forward to hitting that magic number with your guys' help. So if you watch these videos and you don't subscribe, please do. Um, that would be uh, really useful. I don't like to to. Uh, grovel for people to to like and share and all that sort of stuff um but if you do like it say so you know that would be great and if you don't subscribe please do that would also be great um give me that little bit of credibility and make me feel all good and warm and fuzzy about myself um but in the meantime i'll leave it there and until something um interesting that happens either england win the uh, euros or um, something major at Tottenham happens, I'll, uh, I'll speak to you when I speak to you. Up the Spurs.